Live from Appleton, it's APTV. Welcome to APTV, episode 534 for Thursday, March 21st, 2024. I wanted to say that. <laughs> Beat you. This week we have banter, news, updates, pelicans, DuPonts, pencil madness, a grand Seiko, desk savers, a bazillion refills, that is an actual number, uh, corporate gifts, sporty Kuwaitos, a contest winner, a new contest, plus nothing that we can talk about that is coming soon. Hey, Lisa. Hey. Why did I name my iPad the Titanic? I didn't know you had an iPad. I do have an iPad. Okay, yeah. why? Because it's sinking. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, we made him laugh. <laughs> All right, thanks for joining us. We made Justin laugh. We are good to go. <laughs> It is now spring in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, Except we're supposed to have snow uh, several uh, times uh, in the next seven days. Forecasting five inches of snow for tomorrow, so that oh ought to God. be fun. Uh, I, I love snow. I love, I'm working from home. I, I, you know, five inches, four or five inches, that's like the right amount of snow. To get your car stuck? Well, you, you know, you, to get the snowblower out, yeah, it's just enough. Love I love the snowblower. I love, um, uh, I, I love doing the Strava. Oh, when yeah. I do the snowblower, so when you get out and you're doing your 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 mowing your lawn or or, or blowing your snow, you, you turn on Strava with your Apple Watch and and it looks like and then it shows you where you did it. But anyway, okay. Uh, so it's spring. I like staying in while Brian is blowing <laughs> the snow. It works well for both of us. Um, Tuesday, uh, today, Thursday, March twenty first is World Poetry Day, uh, created by UNESCO in nineteen ninety nine. Uh, aims to support linguistic diversity through poetic expression and increase the opportunity for endangered languages to be heard. Today, Thursday, March 21st, is also my mother's 82nd birthday. So happy birthday, Mom. Happy birthday, Mom. We'll see you in a couple months. Uh, Monday, March 25th, is a lunar eclipse. This will be visible all across North and South America. Starts the night of the 24th and goes into the 25th. The peak will be around 2 a.m. Central Time but will last between midnight and 4.30 a.m. We may be awake, depending on whether or not our cat Max <laughs> is misbehaving or not. Uh, you know, it's usually 3 a.m. he wakes us up, and maybe maybe that's the problem. Maybe it's he can sense the lunar eclipse is coming, coming in. Yeah. He's being an idiot. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, a bit further right. out, a week from Saturday, this March 30th, the coming March 30th, is National Pencil Day. Um, we do have a, a large assortment of mechanical pencils, uh, most in working order, a couple that aren't. Uh, so if you find yourself handy, uh, you might find some deals. Uh, but a large assortment, we are going to be putting them uh, up on uh, Friday, March 29th, up for sale. They are available in the store. So if you are a pencil collector, you want to take a look at some vintage pencils, uh, a lot of dual folds, everything from 1920s to 1950s and 60s. Um, some Watermans, all sorts of things. But uh, those are in the store available now. Otherwise, they will be online um, on March 29th, uh, which is uh, also a Good Friday. I heard the creative team was groaning at how many there were. Uh, well, there's going to be more. So um, <laughs> <laughs> I pulled out. I pulled out about 60, and then uh, I went and found another 75 more. So uh, oh I'm working on those now. Um, and hopefully, and you wonder we'll... why they scowl at you when they see you. Well, you know, they're. I'm. Imp- you know. You know what impresses me the most is that many of those came from our basement. Well, yeah. And so this yeah. is a decade later. We are still pulling pens and pencils from our basement. How much stuff do we have down there? No, I'm not going to talk about that. Yeah. I'm not going to so. talk about that. But, yeah, no, there, there, there's going to be some nice uh, – there's, there's, there's a number of vacuumatic pencils. Uh, there's some vest pockets, uh, also some Schaefer golf pencils, a little tiny Those are ones. so cute. They're cute. They're very nice. Like very nice. Um, but uh, lots of uh, – a good uh, – good, Pencil assortment, but uh, there it's in the store now. So if you're if you're local, you want to stop by, uh, you can take a look at them. Otherwise, they'll be available on Friday, March 29th. Awesome. Uh, in news, a uh, couple things. We have a shout out to our good friend Cheryl Lou. So hey, Cheryl. We were chatting the other day, and she said she watched it. So I said, hey, well, let's let's say hi to her. So she's out in in California, somewhere yeah. warm. So Cheryl, please send us ten or fifteen degrees. I know you can spare it. Uh, reminder. All Pelican fountain pens are 30% off right now, excluding the Pelican Twist. We can hear Winston next door. 
Uh, reminder also that ST DuPont D initial rollerballs and ball points are 10% off, the already 20% off, um, and that does include fountain pens if we have any fountain pens left. Yeah, whatever's in stock. Any you know. D initials that are in stock. Uh, we talked about this last week. Uh, this lovely, lovely, lovely aluminum overlay Parker 11, uh, eyedropper lucky curve. Um, this is now available, it's on the website. So if, um, if that's something that you're interested in, um, I, I, have a, I have a couple nibbles on it. So uh, if, it's, if you're seriously interested in this piece, you, you're not likely to find another anytime soon. You know, we try really hard not to use the word rare. Um, a lot of like eBay sellers or, you know, people at pen shows that have vintage yeah. pens, they'll have, you know, rare uh, everywhere. And it's, they aren't. This, this is this, truly this is rare. Um, one of those once in a lifetime kind of um, things that pop up. I mean, I, I, I've seen these before at shows, okay. not very many. Uh, the fact that I actually have one in my hands, first time in almost 30 years. Okay. So... Uh, yeah, these, these these are these are quite scarce, uh, and as far as I know, this pattern is a little different than the the, the other pattern that you typically see on these. So, um, if you're a completist and you've got the other one, then you maybe you need this one. So, uh, but yeah, all right, that's available. Um, and then, of course, a reminder: one week from tomorrow, March 29th, also Good Friday, will be the huge pencil mailer because National Pencil Day is 30th, yeah. March 30th. Yep. Um, and then I this guy too really tortures me. Um, it's a good looking pen. We this is a nice color. One, and we won't talk about this anymore after this, but we have one of the Platinum Sands of Komodo left. This is absolutely gorgeous. Please, somebody buy it because otherwise I'm going to want to take it home. And what nib does that have? You fine that? nib. It's got a fine, fine nib. nib. These are beautiful. Yeah, it's absolutely got this, this pink, the, kind of this pink gold, yeah. pink gold trim on it with the, with the blue transparent. It's a good looking pen, real good looking pen. I know. So, uh, in other news, um, since we seem to be uh, also de-stashing, de -stashing, I'm um, excited. Uh, I decided to, and uh, Justin's going to show some pictures here. I don't have it with me, but uh, I have a Grand Seiko SBGA 373 uh, for you reference uh, lovers out there. Uh, it is a spring drive automatic um, with a power reserve indicator. Champagne dial, which is very hard to make, um, harder to make even than, than the snowflake dial, which everybody knows about. Uh, and uh, display case back, uh, full set, full kit with the box and everything. Um, it's been my watch for about four years. So um, it's got, uh, you know, it, it was used, but it's available. It's a very, very nice uh, watch, about 40, uh, 40 millimeters on that one. You know, I really love... I know it sounds woo-woo, but like the energy that, that happens after you do a big de-stashing or a decluttering. I did my office the other day. I finally unpacked a couple boxes that I had brought back from Chicago that just kind of went into the house and, and were extra stuff. They never got unpacked, and so I finally unpacked those. And uh, people are calling in already. <laughs> um, so it's it's really been a good feeling to de-stash and declutter. Of course, you got to sell it in order for it to call as de-stashing. Because if you just transfer it from the house to the store. Well, I got it out of the house. <laughs> What's a lawyer's favorite drink? Subpoena colada. All right, so Spotlight. Um, we have actually been playing with this for uh, a while and finally just put it on the website. We are calling this the Desk Saver. Uh, kind of came up when uh, we were watching our part-timer <laughs> get ink on our table. He gets he ink was, everywhere. I don't um, know what he does. When he was doing ink samples on Saturdays. And so, um, you know, paper towels are, are slippery. They don't absorb enough. So anyway, what are we talking about? We're talking about silicone coasters. Yes, it's a coaster. Um, made of silicone for a better grip on your desk or your table. Uh, the bottom side has circles on it. It's actually really... It's very firm, yeah. You shockingly... It on, it's not moving. It, it won't yeah. move. Um, it has a lip around the edge to help contain uh, spills. So uh, if you've got, you know, like a noodler's bottle or a private reserve that are over full, you take the lid off and, and you know, it immediately starts to uh, leak ink. This is going to contain all that. 
has raised dots, so your bottle sits on that instead of sitting in that pool of ink. Um, and, and you can use it to... It also like, is very squishy. This, so is, th th this is like the bane of many people's existence, this cap. That and the cross. The cross is awful. Uh, the yeah. cross ink bottle, but which is big and square, and it's on really tight. You can tight. use this to take off your caps, Yeah, which is real nice. If you've got one that's too tight. Or those old Schaefer bottles um, with oh. the metal caps. Um, A lot of them are just difficult to open, so you can use it. Yeah, that's, um, that's great for that. Yeah. Get, a, get an extra one for that. You can just Or spaghetti sauce jars. Just saying. Uh, but anyway, we've we've been using these and playing with these, and they actually don't move on your desk. It's great. Yeah, they're nice. So they're hopefully it will help um, yep. Alex from getting more ink on the table. Awesome. Uh, other spotlight. We are your one-stop refill shop. Who wrote that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Ball points, roller balls, ink cartridges, converters. Don't forget when you're buying a pen or when you're running out of ink, um, Always stock up. You never want to be without an extra set of cartridges or um, especially when you buy a ballpoint or a rollerball, always grab an extra refill because when you run out, you realize, I don't no. it's like light bulbs or batteries. <clears throat> you always need more than you have. Throw the extra in the box. Yep. And then you remember where it is. And that way you remember where it is. So. Uh, you want to talk about that? Yes, Spotlight. Corporate what's... gifts. Don't forget that pens make great gifts. Um, we work with several of our manufacturers. We can do um, small orders, large orders for corporate gifts. Um, we're doing one right now for a financial planner. They're having their 25th anniversary. Um, in Chicago, we did a big order for a nonprofit. So if you are um, a company owner or if you work for a company that is looking for an idea for a gift or an event, um, definitely reach out and we can work with you. We've got, you know, all different price ranges um, with enough time. Uh, lead time, you can get them engraved or um, silk screened. So definitely keep that in mind. There you go. We've we got some, uh, we've got some, a spotlight on Coeco. We do. Classic sport and skyline sport. And so you asked a question before. I did. I like to What's play. the difference between classic sport and the skyline sport? Yes. And the what difference, is the difference? Real difference. The easiest way to tell them apart. Not that one. Yeah. Yeah, I know, but that one's different too. <laughs> you want like to do this? I just to be contrary. <laughs> no, I'm good. I'll, I'll let you do it. Skyline sport has the silver, silver logo and the silver coin on the top. And the classic sports use gold with the gold. And then that also corresponds to the color of the nib. So you get a gold-plated steel nib on a classic sport, and Skyline Sport will just have your standard steel, stainless steel, stainless yeah. steel nib. Yep. Okay. So that's the difference. Um, they're nice pocket size, um, faceted cap and barrel. This design's been around forever. Um, literally, uh, obviously, this is not the same company as the original Caveco. It was sold a number of years ago. Uh, but this design's been around since you know the 30s. Um, Cap screws on to close. International cartridges. Posts well. Yeah, it does post well. Which um, for many people makes it a, a big enough size that it is comfortable in your hand, especially yeah, if you have a larger hand. Like five and a quarter inches. Yeah. It, it doesn't look like it, but it is. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. made in Germany. Uh, really, a, really a, a nice pen. Uh, and these guys are, are super inexpensive. Uh, they start out at 25, 30 bucks, 27 dollars, something like that, depending on the color of the model. Um, so also a good option for a starter pen along with, uh, you know, your classic Metro and Lamy Safari, your Coeco, um, the plastic especially, are um, a really good option. It, it, it's good. It's, it's also good when you can, you can throw it in something, you know, it's so small, um, you know, 4.2 inches, you can throw it in uh, and just it's an extra. You know, if nothing else, I mean, if you throw it in what? Throw it in your bag or your your, your briefcase or your you know, it'll fit in a lady's a small lady's purse. It fits even. in those little side pockets of your purse that you're never yep. quite sure what to put in there. So anyway, they're good. They come in a million colors: green, blue, yes. burgundy, black, uh, black red. red. I mean, oh, yeah, a lot of colors. A lot of colors. So. I do like the the Skyline Sport colors. They are um, not as dark. So well, you got the teal, but the teal's nice. The Toyama um, teal is really great. I like that one a lot. Clearly, I am not coordinated, but uh, just lots of really pretty colors. Yeah, yeah, you can't go wrong. Tons of options. You know, for, right. the, for the cost of a couple of cups of coffee, you can get yourself a nice sport. 
What month of the year has 28 days? All of them. We had a contest last week. We did, every week. Um, what are we going to do if one week we don't have a contest? It'll Just be a, a mess It'll be people. a very, very short podcast. Uh, notebooks, do you prefer hardcover or softcover? Um, hardcover. I like a hardcover. I like a hardcover. Okay. Yes. Uh, I don't use mine for anything that's uh, of any significance, so most of mine are soft cover. Okay. Uh, and, and I just, I usually take, you know, if something gets damaged or something, I don't, I don't I've never bought a notebook. I will go on record. You just steal them? I, no, well, they're, <laughs> you know, they're samples or, you know, they're okay. leftover stuff or, you know, so I always take, I always take soft cover. Uh, Clark Fralick says, I like both. I use a hard cover for my daily journal writing and I use a soft cover for note taking, uh, et cetera. Thanks for another entertaining show. Yep. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yep. For your journals, maybe you, that would be where you'd want the, the hardcover. Uh, Enzio Alexandra Andrehu says, as Lisa said, yes, hardcovers are perfect when you write outdoors without a table or other hard surface. Absolutely. But they have to have a lie flat binding. Yes, I did not mention that. They have to open up flat. Um, otherwise, they drive me crazy. At home, I prefer soft covers because most of them lie flat. Thanks for another another lovely episode of APTV. Uh, We're going to wait. Don't wait for a minute. How do I pronounce that? Cheris. Cheris. Audette. Cheris Audette uh, says, soft cover for me. I have a selection of beautiful leather notebook mm. covers. I keep my journals in. Oh, that's a good idea, too. Yeah. That's a good idea. Uh, love the show. Yeah, so you've got a nice cover. And then you don't. You can save money by buying the soft cover notebooks because yes. the hard cover is always more expensive. Yes, that's a good. I idea. had a really a beautiful idea. leather cover. I don't know what I did with it. I think I gave it away. I have given it to Lindsay. I should get that back. Um, <laughs> you can't keep giving Lindsay stuff and then <laughs> and then want and it then, back. And, and then when she when she brings it out, you go, oh, "That's nice. Can I have that?" <laughs> I gave Lindsay a, a coat once. Oh my god! Every Lord. time I see every her, every time, in it, every I day, I'm like, "Let me try that on. I've lost weight. Maybe I can fit back into it." Uh, John Amoroso says, soft covers for me, and I like to put them in Galen covers. Uh, aluminum trivia, the Washington Monument is topped with aluminum, a very valuable metal at the time. That's interesting to know. Yeah, it was. Uh, so aluminum was, was, and actually this came up on one of the, on the forums the other day. Um, and it's actually, so, so aluminum used to be a, a very valuable metal. And so the, the, the theory was, when we talk about the Parker 11, uh, was that at the time it was more valuable than gold, although the problem was is actually that that whole, um, uh, until they could produce aluminum in, in, in great quantities, it was it was a very valuable material. And then all of a sudden at some point, and I forget the actual, uh, the year, but um, they came up with a technology to be able to produce aluminum quite easily, and so it was no longer as expensive. So we all think that the Parker 11s were, are, are the aluminum was, was more desirable than gold, except that, that shift happened a couple decades earlier. So, okay. interesting. But uh, more than you wanted to know about aluminum. It's, but it's interesting yeah. to know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Debbie uh, Podgorski says, like a soft cover in my travels, traveler's notebook it is easy to carry around, and I like the space it has in the regular and not passport size. All right. Okay. Sandy says, I have and use both. Depends on the situation. I carry a field notes notebook in my dale, in my pocket daily at work. Yu uh, Klim Ka says, I prefer hardcover journals with lay flat binding. Uh, they're so much easier to use while sitting on the couch, yep. to your point. I have some of the regular LT, uh, Leuctor 1917, and the 120 GSM ones stashed away. Yep, those are those great. Are great. Yep. Walt Huntsman says, I tend to use soft cover notebooks. As to why, I really don't know. Uh, probably because they're lighter and I can throw one or more in my bag. Now that I also have a reusable cover, I'll probably stick with soft cover notebooks. So yeah, the same thing. Yeah, yeah, that's a really great idea. Emily Snope, honestly, I like both hard and soft covers. What I look for is the paper dot grid that shows off my inks, like Tomoway River is what I look for. So a nice alternative view. Yep. Uh, we have a winner. Brian Marsh uh, was the winner and he says, yes, the paper matters more than the cover. So. There we go. Uh, congratulations, Brian. Send an email to eric at andersonpens.com. He will take uh, care of getting that uh, credit on your Anderson Pens account. All right. We have a new contest. Uh, spring cleaning. When is the last time you cleaned your pens? Be honest. 
Um, and there is a note that says a confession <laughs> from Lisa. Um, I stand up here and I preach, clean your pens, and I don't. I you just, do. You do. I, I do, but. You do it more often than I do. Oh, okay. You well, do. Well, apparently I do it more yes, often than I Yes, because you do it in, you do it in the bathroom. And then I do. You put, well, the problem you is You lay them that all out on the side. I do it on the bathroom. Sink. And I'll lay them. Uh, uh, we have a pedestal sink. We have an older house, and so I don't have a big long counter. But I, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to bring them all downstairs to the kitchen. Um, so I'm always torn. And with me, you know, so sometimes I'll lay them on top of the toilet seat, and then of course, you know, you got to go downstairs or whatever. It's it, I just I don't clean my pens as often as I think you should or I should. Um, but when I do, I do them all. Yeah, you do um, them all at once. Because I usually wait until they're all dry. That's my confession, is I don't do them on a regular basis. I do them when none of them work anymore yeah, because no, they it's, are all out of ink. So I used to carry a 13 pen case. Yes. And I would have, I'd go through. And so, okay, <laughs> that, that one ran out. Well, that's why I got 13 because I got 12 more. And then you get down okay. to the last one. I mean, it used to be kind of a joke at shows. I would, I would have a bunch of vanishing points and I would pull them all out. And none of them would work because I would just keep grabbing the, the next, next vanishing point. Okay. So I do mine one at a time. When I decided I want to change, when I decided I want to use this this vanishing point last week, I took it off the desk, I cleaned it, See, then me, I inked it. It seems like more work to do just one at a time. Well, then then I only have to do one. I know. I do one. I, like, I, I pick the pen that I want to use okay. for that week or two weeks, and then I clean it, and then the other ones languish on my okay. <laughs> desk dirty. I, anyway. I tend to wait until everything is dead and empty and dry you want to and clean then mine? no and then i have to do them all and it <laughs> seems like a much bigger ordeal but i actually like it i find it okay. very relaxing so question when is the last time you cleaned your pens and of course cuz i like to add a little sub question um, do you wait do you do one at a time or you, do you do them in big batches so i don't have time for that stuff one at a time one at a <laughs> you time. are here with the ultrasonic, you can just toss them in and Yeah, no, I'm busy. I'm, I'm busy, working though. at home. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to unearth pens for people to have for their collection. You know how hard that is? Yes, I do. One commenter will be chosen at random to win a $20 credit on his or her Anderson Pens account. Do you have anything else you would like to add today, Mrs. Anderson? Nothing that we can talk Nothing about. Nothing we can talk about. Thanks for joining us. Tune in next week for more talk about pens, ink, and paper. Check us out on social media as Anderson Pens and like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Bye. Bye.